Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. The Singapore Sports Hub has arrived. The world's ultimate multifunction sports complex. Like a giant transformer, it adapts to host more than 30 different sports. The Sports Hub in general is amazing, it's because it's the state of the art. And its crowning glory is the new national stadium. We needed to create a world-class venue, a landmark. Building the Sports Hub has been an epic three-year journey. Welcome to my office. An army of workers risk life and limb oh, to create the stadium. Nine other multi-purpose venues and the world's largest free-spanning dome roof. A bold vision that is now Singapore's field of dreams. June the 28th, 2014. It's open house day at Singapore's brand new National Sports Centre. A place where everyone can play. The typical conception of a stadium is that it's a place where you hold big events. When you're not having a big event, it lies empty and quiet. So we wanted the sports hub to be alive all the time. Some place where Singaporeans will come on a regular basis, not just for big events, but to take part in events themselves. The Sports Hub is jam-packed with features. A 55,000-seat stadium, sports halls, water sports centre, public water park, indoor aquatic centre, and a multitude of community facilities, including a museum, a library, and there's even a retail mall. But this place is about much more than fitness and fun. Wow! It's a fantastic stadium, but it's got a big job to beat the old a national stadium. The Sports Hub is also the proud new home of a great tradition. A tradition that began on another memorable opening day 40 years ago. I now declare this stadium open. Thank you. In 1973, Singapore's brand new national stadium was a monument to a young nation's unity and pride and a symbol of its determination to make its mark in the world of sport. That year, the national stadium hosted the Southeast Asian Peninsula Games, an unforgettable moment for Singapore and for Singapore's greatest sprinter, C. Kunalan. The National Stadium has a special meaning to me. Uh, I have a lot of feeling for it. I did make a comeback for the 1973 SEA Games that Singapore hosted for the first time. It was such a thrill to run the race. The stadium really has good feelings for me. Retired from racing, Kunala made a comeback just to light the opening flame. But it led to much more. I was way past my peak when the National Stadium was open. I had a call from the coaches and, and they said, Hey, Kunalan, we like you to run for the 4 times 400 And I said, are you kidding? I've not been training since 1970. Then they said, hey, no, 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 come on. This is for Singapore. The stadium really has good feeling for me. Kunalan and his team won a silver medal at the 1973 SEA Games. And in the stands of the National Stadium, another hero was born. As a teenager, I remember uh, the first time I went to the stadium to watch uh, uh, SEA Games. 1973, I was sitting right behind the goal. Then I was wondering to myself how they become national players. 
the boy from the stands became the greatest footballer in Singapore history, playing 101 matches for his country and scoring an incredible 55 goals. My best goal for Singapore was in 1983, Southeast Asian Games, Singapore versus Malaysia. I received a pass and I managed to beat uh, Santos Singh, one of the stopper and the captain as well, before I dribble on the byline and then squeeze the ball past the goalkeeper. I remember those days was uh, fantastic years of Singapore football because of the famous Kalam World, the stamping, and of course some of my friends when we were playing they used to sell drinks part time. Uh, drinks, popo, kwachi, that's a famous word, and the blower. No? The National Stadium was my best hunting ground of all time. I've scored many goals, memorable goals for my club and especially for my country, Singapore. But almost four decades since its opening, the National Stadium's race had run. Our national stadium uh, was beginning to look quite old and our aquatic stadium in Topayo. Both of these were built in 1973 when we first hosted the SEA Games and we all wanted to see modern facilities. The problem was where to put them. Vacant land is almost impossible to find here. Singapore's new home of sport would have to be built where its old one already stood, the Kalang Basin. So the old stadium had to go. In September 2010, the bulldozers moved in. When I found out that National Stadium will be demolished, not only me, all my friend teammates, uh, we were surprised and very sad. Although I did feel that it was a big part of me, big part of Singapore, uh, when it was finally decided that <clears throat> the only way was to demolish and rebuild, I was in support. The way I look at it is sacrificing for the greater good of, for the future. And can you imagine, our young people, they are not going to be thrilled by their old stadium. So you know, when they see this hub, they will be thrilled. So I think it's for the better. The entire sports hub project has to be completed in under four years so there's not a moment to lose. Even a national icon has to come down fast. It's now November 2010, three months after demolition began, and lead engineer Liu Yu Sin knows he needs to pick up the pace. It's a bit of pressure because uh, time is short. We have to work very hard. But a giant obstacle is standing in his path. The stadium's iconic 68-metre light towers. These mighty towers were made to last several lifetimes. And they're far too tall to be safely demolished by heavy-duty crushers. Liu's team consider using explosives, but flying debris could damage neighbouring buildings. So they decide to try a rarely used demolition technique by slicing the towers into four manageable pieces. The crew can bring down one piece at a time and crush it at ground level. But they can't slice the towers with an ordinary steel saw. So Liu turns to the ultimate weapon in his demolition arsenal. The diamond saw. The white part is the diamond. Inside it is steel wire. Steel wire with, with uh, rubber. When the machine starts, the motor will pull the diamond wire and the, the diamond wire will start cutting the, the tower. A stream of water keeps the cutting cable cool. If it overheats, the wire will expand, jam and then snap with terrifying consequences. If it's break, if someone stand nearby, it will snap at somebody and it will injure somebody. 
as if deadly diamond-studded wires aren't enough to worry about. A thunderstorm suddenly appears on the horizon. If heavy rains come and there's lightning, we have to stop work because this will endanger our life. With a ground team keeping an eye on the menacing clouds, Liu presses on. So the tension okay, ah? Finally, after a full day's work, the diamond saw slices through. That's the first of three cuts on this tower. And there's still another three towers to go. While Liu's team reduces the old stadium to dust, that's a challenge. A design team of local architects, Tio Hai Pin, Sia Chi Huang, along with Clive Lewis, were working overtime on its replacement. Uh, starts to act like. I think we are struggling with the identity to arrive at the identity for the national stadium. They've had a hand in building some of the world's biggest stadiums, including London's Wembley and Beijing's Bird's Nest. Singapore's new stadium needs to be just as impressive. It is supposed to be a national stadium, so we needed to create a world-class venue. But how do we inspire? to create a landmark. The team turned to nature for inspiration. They drafted designs sparked by tropical plants and experimented with curves and spaces. After going through many design and many debates, we started to appreciate a very simple structure so a simple dome eventually was adopted. And the trick then is how to make this simple structure look beautiful. It's actually quite emotional to see how it has grown and we have spent eight years of our life on the project. But what we are really looking forward to is uh, how we see our design translate from paper to the physical form. The team designs a stadium that could comfortably hold the Sydney Opera House inside its shell. It will be the largest free-spanning dome in the world. By the end of the second year of construction, most of the roof is in place. So far, the massive web of steel has fitted together perfectly. But only now, when they raise the final roof truss into position, will the team find out if they've succeeded. The worst case scenario is that uh, during the lifting, the truss cannot go inside. If the truss cannot be fixed, we need to bring down the truss and do all over again. This last truss spans 78 meters and weighs a colossal 140 tons. Two of the largest cranes in Singapore will be taking on this Herculean lift. If its operation isn't synchronized perfectly, the cranes and the truss could come tumbling down. And if the cranes aren't in exactly the right locations, they can't lift the truss to where it needs to go. But after two hours of delicate maneuvering, the truss locks perfectly 
into position. Everything went so smooth. It's perfect now. I'm very happy that the truss is uh, finally in position. It's been a good day for the stadium builders. One challenge met, but so many more to come. Singapore's new stadium will be of epic proportions. And that's given its builders another big challenge. When you put a stadium that size just one degree north of the equator, how do you keep thousands of people inside cool and dry? You call in the Spider-Man. Singapore's only rope access experts, led by eight-year veteran, Fauzi Razak. Okay, this job is actually very, very high risk, but in terms of scared, I'm not used to it actually. <laughs> The Spider-Men start the day with a precarious 30-minute climb to the top. Welcome to my office. <laughs> the view, it's beautiful. <laughs> They're risking their lives to make the lives of sports fans easier. In the old days of the National Stadium, Sports fans had to endure tropical downpours and seating tiers heated by hours under a baking sun. But the design team knows that today's fans expect to be comfortable in all weather conditions. To shield fans from extreme weather, the team has created a very special material to cover the roof. A combination of insulating foam sandwiched between two sheets of highly reflective, lightweight steel. By reflecting and absorbing solar energy, it should block out most of the sun's heat. But first, the Spider-Men have to install nearly 500 panels of it, 80 meters up. The Spider-Men can't afford to make a single slip. And they don't intend to. Even though I'm at 80 meters above the ground, I know I'm very, very safe. There will be always two ropes that will be attached to me. If anything happened to the one, I still have the other one. So it's very, very safe. Moving every roof panel into position depends on the Spider-Man. It takes a little bit of time because, because of the alignment and, and everything. So, yeah, we're doing good here. Just a few more minutes and we're done. Every day, the team bolt on at least two of these roof panels weighing between 2 and 22 tons. Now it's, uh, it's the 107 installed. I got one down here and we got 337 to go. Yeah. Far below the Spider-Man, another state-of-the-art sports venue is taking shape. The Sports Hub's aquatic centre will host not just swimming, but also water polo, synchronised swimming and diving competitions. It will be equipped with the latest competitive swimming technology, including electronic timer touchpads and underwater cameras that sports scientists will use to train a new generation of elite Singaporean swimmers. A super pool for future champions and a dream come true <laughs> for a living legend. Ang Peng Xiong was the winner of 1982's World's Fastest Swimmer Award. And a year later, as Singapore hosted the Sea Games, he won gold in his pet event, the 50-meter freestyle. 
But at the time, Singapore lacked a world-class competition pool. With the Olympic Games, you see stadiums that are really uh, magnificent. And I thought it was uh, quite appropriate to rebuilding a new facility. I'm very happy that they decided to build it. It looks really grand. To fulfill its destiny as the centre of Singapore sport, the National Stadium will have to offer not just one, but three different playing fields. One for cricket, one for track and field events, and one for football and rugby. Introducing moving seating was the obvious solution. It's a fantastic opportunity to do everything in one space. So we get three sports configurations in one stadium. The design team came up with a simple but effective solution. They placed more than half of the seating into movable lower tiers. But how would those tiers change from one seating configuration to another? The team decided to lift them with nothing but air. Raising them with high-pressure air-filled skates made of tough, low-friction Teflon, then dragging them into position with powerful hydraulic claws. But the system is untried, and everything is riding on its first test, moving one-fifth of a full tier section that weighs nearly 300 tons. In line with the final position. So installation is good for you. Failure would mean redesigning and rebuilding the entire system and would set the construction schedule back by months. A lot of things could go wrong, in fact. Uh, the first one is we can not lifting anymore at all because everything is too heavy. Uh, we could lose some too much pressure and land too soon. Or the jack not strong enough. Here we have two jacks only. But after, we will have seven of them. They have to work all together in order to keep the lower tier sliding as a, a straight line and not to churn. The 300-ton tier moves without a hitch. The construction of the eight moving tiers can now proceed as planned. Everything goes really pretty well. Some small uh, improvement to do, but uh, it's very good, it's very good. It's a moment to savour. But as night falls, another challenge looms. Engineers get ready to build one of the largest moving roofs in the world. January 2014. The epic task of building Singapore's new sports hub enters its final year. The construction team's about to pull an all-nighter, installing one of the National Stadium's most impressive features, its movable roof. The wind is very strong up there, so we need to be more careful. Careful indeed. When the roof truss you're moving weighs 90 tons, quite heavy, it doesn't swing uh, that much. We just have to be patient. When the wind is blowing, we just hold it there. Once the wind is calmer there, then we start to lower it slowly. This will take another uh, three to four hours. When that, once that's done, we will release the hook, and that's complete the whole operation. It takes four months to build the stadium roof. When it's finished, its builders must make sure its two colossal halves actually do close. Lead engineer Arno Georgentham's team of software engineers mans the command center. We have three kilometers of uh, tracks and the roof is 200 meters, so this is a large space to cover. We are checking during the first movements 
that there is no clash between the bogies and the track beams. At the same time also we have sensors which have to be adjusted to check the position of the roof. This is a lot of things to control at the same time. Viran, Viran, can we move now? It's clear now, it's clear now. Okay, Chi, we proceed. The sliding roof's individual motors have to be precisely speed controlled so that the entire roof travels evenly. For this first closing, their speed is cautiously slow. So far it's going well. The tensions are OK. Mechanically, everything is OK. But the roof suddenly stops. Arno and his team check all software systems and inspect all motors and tracks. But everything appears to be as it should. Until the team finally identifies the culprit, one of the system's many sensors. We have a lot of sensors in this, uh, in this roof to check the positions of all the runway trails. And uh, this has given the wrong information. So now it has triggered the emergency stop. Can you check that uh, it's not clashing with the reader? That we have enough space? This is more a matter of adjustments. This is the purpose of the test to adjust all these uh, sensors. Now doing quick tensioning, right? Uh, not good, good yeah, you see the tensions between the north and the south looks almost the same. Looks good. We still have another 60% uh, to do before we manage to close the roof. It's not fully closed because uh, we are still in the process of uh, doing the final works on the, on the joint itself. But the alignment is there already, the alignment is correct. The stadium's retractable roof will be one of the largest in the world. And it won't be the only place in the sports hub that can transform itself. The Aquatic Centre can convert its 50-metre Olympic pool into two 25-metre pools, so athletes can train on one side while the public enjoy the other. And staff at the two multi-purpose arenas can reconfigure collapsible seating to suit a variety of sports, like badminton, table tennis, basketball and gymnastics. Back in the stadium, a father and son team are stepping up to a daunting task, turning the world's biggest free-spanning dome into a world-class sound and visual stage. For Dad Ronald, it's a case of déjà vu. Forty years ago, he was at exactly the same spot, facing just as big a mission. At the old stadium, we installed the main sound system for the outdoor as well as for the indoor. Winning a contract for the old National Stadium was a turning point for the family business. It was the biggest project that I've ever done, you know, when I was 28 years old. So, you know, it was, it was still actually green behind the years, but then we had opportunity to work with good people. Uh, in those days, it was a very simple, you know, analog system. The system here is so much more complex. So it is entirely a new ball game as compared to what we did 40 years ago. Today, the baton has passed to son Gary. I feel really fortunate to have the opportunity to work to, uh, on the new national stadium on the same exact site, you know, 30-something uh, years later. But filling this enormous space with concert quality sound will be the greatest test the family firm has ever faced. 
The stadium is a, it's a big acoustical environment, so the challenge is to have as directional speaker as possible to ensure that you know all, all the sound is directed towards the audience and not to the areas that you, you don't want sound at. If Gary doesn't get the direction, position and power of all the speakers right, spectators will hear a muddied, incoherent mix of sounds. The use of the, the simulation software uh, allows us to make very fine adjustments with the speaker positions to ensure that we are achieving optimum coverage with minimum interference. Today, workers are installing the first of 90 speakers. Gary won't know if he's got it right until they're all in position and he's pumped up the volume. My dad has uh, left pretty big shoes to fill and I, I definitely feel pressure with my, my dad watching over me but uh, that, that's what sort of uh, drives me to do even better. Atop the stadium dome, another team takes on a very different mission. Covering the movable roof with translucent and heat resistant plastic pillows. ETFE plastic, the same material that was used on the Beijing Olympics water cube. The Sports Hub's ETFE pillows will let full daylight in, but block out most of the sun's heat. So we only get 8% solar radiation through that material, but we were able to get the effect of natural daylight within the space. So that's quite an amazing material to be able to use. It's also very, very lightweight. But in Singapore's year-round 30-degree climate, even the miracle of ETFE won't be enough to keep the stadium cool. If we can just drop the temperature very you know, slightly, four or five degrees, that little bit of cooling and the air movement can make for a much more pleasant environment. Air conditioning the entire dome Again, these, would be far too energy intensive and expensive. In terms of the temperature range and the comfort criteria, temperature, mid middle of the day. So the team came up with a brilliantly simple alternative. Energy from an array of on-site solar cells powers air conditioning. The chilled air blows out from under every seat and uses less energy because it only cools the areas around the spectators. So we, we ended up with a, a bulk cooling system that used about a fifth of the energy required uh, when compared to a conventional uh, air-conditioned stadium. Day after day, year after year, the Sports Hub's builders have faced and met the challenges of turning a daring design into reality. But now, time's nearly up. Everything must be ready and work perfectly. The ultimate test is only weeks away. April 2014. The Sports Hub's scheduled completion is only weeks away. More than a thousand workers are laboring around the clock to meet that deadline. Across town, Greg Gillen has been confronting a very different challenge. Growing the stadium's grass. We're currently out at the Orchid Country Club. For the last 18 months, this is where we've been destruction testing our sports grass to try and find the toughest breed of turf for our Singapore Sports Hub National Stadium. Grass usually grows like crazy in Singapore's tropical climate. But it's a much tougher life at the National Stadium. Because of the, the 83 metre dump, we have very little exposure to sunlight, so we have to come up with a different solution of a turf grass. To find a grass that could cope with the unusual conditions, Greg and his team test planted more than 15 varieties. We had to try and recreate um, our light and ventilation conditions. Um, so what we did is we built these shade structures to try and replicate the conditions inside the stadium. At the end of the trial, Greg came to a surprising conclusion. We found that the Northern Hemisphere grass has adapted much, much better to the stadium microclimate that we were trying to recreate out here. 
The winner of the turf trials was a combination of Kentucky bluegrass, which gives toughness, mixed with a faster germinating ryegrass that recovers quickly after events. Both were stitched into the surface last weekend and uh, we've now started to see, after four days, um, the ryegrass starting to come through and we expect to see this come through in about another week. The stadium's new turf had better grow up to be as tough as it's supposed to be. Life's not going to be easy. The grass on this field will have to withstand some of the most punishing treatment in the world. We could have up to 100 events a year, so that means we have to have a very robust sports turf so the players can run at the ball with confidence and don't, not feel like they're going to slip or slide or injure themselves. Greg decided to reinforce the stadium's pitch with a high-tech artificial turf. Mixed with natural grass, the Desso Grassmaster system uses strands of tough artificial fibres stitched 140 millimetres into the soil. So what we've got here is a Desso machine which acts like a giant sewing machine. So these are the needles that stitch or are pushed straight down into the playing surface. Um, and every 20 millimetres, they will stitch fibre into the surface. By the time we're finished, there's going to be about 114 million fibres in this surface, um, which makes up about 3% of the playing surface. The interwoven mesh of Desso grass locks the surface together. Those fibres are punched down, so that gives them that anchoring ability, so when the player's stud interfaces with the top of the fibre, it doesn't pull out. The combination of the two makes it a very strong playing surface. And as such, FIFA have qualified this as a 100% natural playing surface. 80 metres above the turf, a team is hanging precariously between the dome and the movable roof. creating one of the world's largest LED projection screens. The ETFE roof pillows will be illuminated by programmable LEDs, so almost anything can be projected. This is uh, one example of what we've installed uh, on the roof. There are 6,000 of these T-bars across the roof and each T-bar consists of three pixels. So we have something like 20,000 pixels on the entire roof. The, the whole lighting sequence is synchronized from one single computer. It's a fancy concert lighting type system. Let's see if the lights work. Lights on. Looks like we've got a uh, a couple of lights that are not switched on over here. Looks like we have a connection problem over here. Right? Um, it's fairly common for installation as large as this. So we're looking forward to having our Singapore flag proudly displayed on the, on the roof. As construction finishes, another team's about to learn if they've succeeded or failed. After working through the night, audio engineer Gary Go is about to have his 18 months of work judged a success or failure. Marking Gary's scorecard is the toughest of all critics, his father, Ronald. Today will be the first time that we are turning on all the speakers at one time. I think we've been waiting for this day for a while. We run simulations and, and all that, but it's another thing to actually hear it for the first time. The goal was to deliver the clarity of a concert hall with the punch of a rock concert. To test the acoustics, Ronald will play an old favourite. Bolero. That track has a lot of good memories for me. In fact, when we did the first stadium, I tested Bolero too. So this is what 300,000 watts of sound power sounds like. You can feel it in your chest. I feel like I'm in the concert hall and not in the stadium. I'm proud of Gary and his team. You know, who, who can make the sound, who can make the speakers, the sound system sounds like this. It is, it's awesome. Thank you.
opening day is fast approaching as the sports hub gets its finishing touches, including a remnant from the past. There's a lot of sentimentality about the old Kalang Stadium because of the events that a lot of Singaporeans shared there. And so there was obviously no way to keep the entire stadium. But one part of the stadium was very cleverly sort of recycled. In 2012, Singapore's Urban Redevelopment Authority commissioned designers to turn some of the old National Stadium's wooden benches into 26 new benches placed around the city. And there are so many ways we can make it go up and down. It could... It could go up and up and up. Colin Sear and it's Angie Ong's bench design wall. was inspired by the old stadium's beloved Kalang Wave. The wave would happen spontaneously during soccer matches and it became such a phenomenon. It's contagious. It's something that um, just spreads throughout the entire round of the stadium once it gets started. So that's why the bench itself is an extremely long length, nine meters in total. So it starts off with this smaller wave and grows and grows until the largest. It embodies so much of this emotion and joy that you get. In April 2014, the Kalang Wave went to its permanent home at the Sports Hub's new Singapore Sports Museum. Yeah, I just wish that they would extend it and make the wave 200 meters long and all around the yeah. stadium. That would be fantastic. June the 28th, 2014. After three years, the Sports Hub is complete. Now, it's time for the ultimate test of Singapore's new national sports complex. Opening its doors for the first time to the people it's been built to serve. Well, we want to make the sports hub accessible to all Singaporeans. It's a program for everyone. We have community basketball courts, we have community skate parks, we've got lawn bowls, we've got beach volleyball courts. And these are just for the community. Have fun, just play. I think it's really cool that the shopping mall has a rock climbing wall. Like it becomes more convenient at the same time also. And I can go climbing all the time. It's uh, very well finished. All the facilities are quite world class. And we are enjoying our time here so far. And the sports hub isn't just a hit with amateur athletes. Pros like it too. Uh, I've never seen a stadium like this in my life. And if 55,000 fans can come down and support, it would be amazing. It isn't long before amazing happens. In August 2014, Singaporeans flock by the thousands to the first football match in the National Stadium. To see a Singaporean team take on Juventus, Italian football's most successful club. Singapore football's favourite son is predicting a big night. I'm looking forward to, to hear the greatest Kalang Ro ever. We've been missing it for ages now. Fandy doesn't have to wait long. Even before the first goal, there's no doubt how everyone's feeling in their new home. It's really an emotional moment for all of us to really experience what we have dreamed of eight years ago as a team. Just come alive. Now, this is the first time that everything has really come together with the event here uh, today. So the moving roof closed, the seats brought forward into like this football configuration. And seeing that today uh, is a realisation of a dream. Very exciting. The stadium has passed its first big test with flying colours. I'm very excited about the fact that the vision that we have set out in 2001 is now a reality. The Sports Hub 
will be a game changer for the sporting scene in Singapore. It will be a place where champions are born, where records are broken, and it will be an iconic landmark that the world will see and which all Singaporeans can be proud of. 40 years ago, a great stadium inaugurated a new nation's sports history and sparked the careers of Singapore's first sporting legends. Now a new era has begun with a sports hub that will place Singapore proudly among the world's great sporting nations and will inspire new generations of Singaporeans to search for their own field of dreams.